Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for being here. Today we're going to forge an integral buoy knife using a method I am calling retained canister Damascus. You're probably wondering what in the world retained canister Damascus is, and that's a great question. It involves a large chunk of steel, drilling some holes, doing some forge welding. But before we get into it, I want to say that this video is part of a wider collaboration with 17 other groovy and talented bladesmiths here on YouTube. We're all building our own cool buoy knife for your viewing pleasure. And guess what? You get to pick your favorite by voting through October 29th. So go ahead and watch their videos, links are in the description below, and then click on the vote link to pick your favorite. Let's get into it. This is 1060 carbon steel. I need to, to mark out some equally spaced holes down the center of this here. Okay, so here's our block of steel. We still need to cut this off somewhere here. I don't know, like I'm thinking, uh, how far can I actually drill this? You know, something like this. That's gonna be plenty deep because this is all gonna be drawn out. So two and, uh, let's say two and a quarter inches here. I'm making an integral blade, an integral knife. And that means that the tang, the guard, the blade are all forged out of one piece of steel. Um, you know, I'm gonna cut it right here. It's just a random length, but that's gonna be plenty of material for the guard and the tang. Okay, we have our massive chunk of steel here. This is a lot of steel. Okay, so we have some holes drilled, and I actually had to take a break and stick this between my aluminum plates to cool it down, get a little warm. But I'm, I'm a little worried. Um, I think we're gonna have to adjust course slightly and actually go with a design that I was originally thinking. Um, I, this has kind of changed in my head multiple times. Uh, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is make these holes about a quarter of an inch Maybe even a little bigger. Here's my concern. If you if you haven't figured it out yet, whatever we're drilling these holes here and then the steel in between them is going to comprise the blade. All this stuff, which is quite a bit of stock on either side, is going to go away uh, because we want to have our, our pattern revealed. And so I'm not sure if that from here to there and then, you know, this deep is quite enough steel for a big buoy blade. So. We don't have to drill any deeper, but I do think we need to go wider. That is a lot of drilling. And you can see there's some spots that I did not drill holes because I did not really precisely mark anything out and it was gonna dig into the other holes, but that's okay. This part doesn't have to be super precise. I bet you're wondering if you can make a knife out of that stuff. Well, look at this uh, video link right here. Okay, so we have our holes drilled and you probably figured out, like I did after the fact, that I could have just drilled holes on the outside edge here and left the center solid, which would have given us our pattern and plenty of material, but we'll save that for the next time around. So now comes the fun part. First thing we're gonna do is put some powdered steel in here. And this is 1080 powdered steel with 4% nickel powder added. So it uh, makes a good contrast. And now comes the other fun part, putting ball bearings in. And that's why I drilled the holes just so that we can, you know, just big enough to put those bearings in and some of them are plenty big. But we're gonna kind of put a bearing in each each hole here. I should have done this uh, in order because now I'm not sure which ones I put in. But I guess if you get a couple in there, um, that's fine too. All right, so we have all these holes jam-packed with ball bearings and powdered steel. Now we need to weld a cap on top of this so we can forge weld this whole thing together. Okay, I've got my mild steel cap here and then I've got a piece of high temperature stainless steel foil we're going to place in between 
That way, this cap is not going to weld to the end of our billet here, making it much easier to get off. And then, we'll go ahead and clamp this all down carefully. Okay, so I've got the cap welded on here, and I went ahead and made a mark on this side so we know where to forge this blade section down. All right, here's our billet, still super hot. I hope everything's welded solid in there. This is the stage where we get to find out though because I don't want to do any more forging without removing that outer layer of material uh, so we know exactly where our thickness needs to be, if that makes sense. We need to get down to our pattern and then we can work with that from there. Well, it looks like the weld took fine. It appears to be a solid piece of steel. Uh, visually speaking, there's no gaps or inclusions or anything like that. We've got it ground down to where our pattern is, or at least very close. We'll go ahead and forge this out uh, thicker than we need.
Okay, we have a thing that looks starting to look like a knife. Yeah, I was able to, well, paying attention to getting this straight here in between the the bolster or the guard and uh, had to fiddle with this fair amount here to forge it. It's a little narrower through here than I would prefer, but I think it's something we can work with. I think we have enough material here. And yeah, I left the blade really thick, pretty thick, quarter inch or so, so we can grind, grind through and get to more of our pattern, hopefully. Plenty for the tang here. So the next thing to do is go ahead and do some grinding on this. Alright, so we have this ground, rough ground down, and it's looking like a Bowie knife. There's still quite a bit of material left on the blade here, which is good because we have to do a series of heat treat cycles now, starting with normalizing and then grain refinement, so let's go ahead and throw this in the kiln. So we've got our Bowie knife all tempered, heat treated and tempered, ready to go. Look at that, it's looking pretty cool, I think. It does have a bit of a, uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of a wow to the blade there. I'm hoping we can grind that out. If not, we're gonna have to move it over with a little bit of heat. But in any event, the next step is to grind some more on this chunk of steel. Six or seven days later, Okay guys, we have this finished ground finally. I only went up to 120 grit, which is still pretty rough. It's all gonna be hand sanded. Well, I should say the blade is all gonna be hand sanded. Um, I'm gonna try something a little different on the bolster here, but this is looking pretty good and it's starting to balance out pretty nicely too. Okay, so we have this all hand sanded and ready to go, ready to etch. We've got the guard kind of mangled up a little bit, finish wise, we'll see how that comes out. I'm excited to see what this looks like. This is getting close, very close.
All right, so I went ahead and re-oxidized in the ferric chloride, the tang, and the guard where we kind of ran up against it in finishing the handle. Oh, I've got still, still have wire attached to that. Look at that. So it's looking pretty groovy, quite frankly. Let me get this wire off of here. Well, this has been quite the interesting experiment, to be honest, and it feels pretty good. I, you know, honestly, I would not do a taper tang if I did this again. Um, a little more weight in the back here would have been just fine, but it's it's pretty tight. Like it's right there. I, hand, I think it would handle. I think the balance is, uh, yeah, it's pretty good, actually. But how did the pattern turn out? That's what you're all wondering, right? So stick around because I'm going to show you pictures. But as always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to vote for your favorite Bowie knife between October 22nd and 29th, 2021. Click the link below to go do that. All that good stuff. See you on the next video.